The three pressure instruments out of the six primary instruments are the six pack are the airspeed indicator, the altimeter, and the vertical speed indicator. And they work off of changes in air pressure. That air pressure is being directed into the instrumentation system through the pitot-static system. So you have the static port that's directed or it's oriented away or outside of the relative wind, usually to the side, and the pitot tube that's oriented into the relative wind. Changes in air pressure are going to affect these instruments in different ways. This is what they're actually connected to. On the right, the altimeter and vertical speed indicator are only connected to the static port. So their only source of information comes through that static tube or that static opening that's usually on the side of the aircraft or oriented to the side with respect to relative wind. The airspeed indicator is connected to the static pressure system, but it's also connected to the pitot, static, to the pitot uh, system. So changes in both of those systems are going to register on the airspeed indicator. And specifically, the difference in pressure between the pitot system and the static system is going to register as a change in airspeed. So this aircraft sitting on the ground on the runway, not moving yet, it has an airspeed of zero. And the difference between the pressure in the pitot tube and the pressure in the static system is also zero. The air pressure outside is going to be 29.92 inches, just as an example. So only when the aircraft starts to move through the air will the pressure in the pitot system start to increase. Right now, there's no ram pressure, meaning that that intake at the front of the pitot tube isn't detecting any additional pressure with, uh, that would come from the aircraft moving with speed through the air. So the pressure in the pitot system and the pressure in the static system are both the same, 2992. The airspeed indicator is going to have a zero indication on it. It's only when ram air starts to come through that intake that the airspeed indication will start to creep up. So now we've got the aircraft on a takeoff roll. It's accelerating down the runway. The static pressure is unchanged. It, we're still at 29.92 because we're still on the ground. We haven't gone up or down in altitude, but the pressure inside the pitot system has increased. Notice the back of that pitot tube has a little drain hole on it that's letting static air pressure in. That same 2992 inches of mercury is getting into the pitot system, but it's being joined now by some ram air pressure. As the aircraft is accelerating or as it's moving with speed through the air, that pressure that's being intaked, that's being brought in through that intake uh, port is increasing. So 0.17 inches of ram pressure, 29.92 <clears throat> inches of static pressure is going to combine to give us an increased pitot pressure, 30.09 inches. These numbers are based on you know the the, the standard relationship of, of of how this airspeed indicator and how these uh, instruments work. But the main thing is is that as you move through the air faster, the pressure in the pitot port will increase while the pressure in the static port will remain the same. So you have a indication of an increased airspeed on that airspeed indicator. Meanwhile, though, no change registered on the altimeter or the vertical speed indicator because we haven't climbed or descended yet. Now, as the aircraft rotates, leaves the ground and starts to climb, it's going to start getting into higher and therefore lower pressure air. Both the static system and the pitot system will register a reduction in air pressure. And you see that there. As we climb, the air gets less thin, so the air coming through the static system is going to get lower and lower, but that same reduction is going to be experienced by the pitot system as well. Remember that little outflow drain on the back is going to let static air pressure into the system. Now it'll be joined by that ram air pressure that's about a half an inch, see that 0.48 inches at the front, but it's not the fact that we've gone up or down and that static pressure has changed that's causing a, a change in the airspeed. It's the fact that that ram pressure has gotten higher and higher. The faster we go, the more air molecules we're ramming into that pitot tube, the higher the indication of airspeed. And now the aircraft will level out at a nice 3,000 feet of altitude and 100 knots. So we're in straight and level unaccelerated flight and so we have constant indications on all three of these pressure instruments. 3,000 feet will be uh, our constant altitude because we're not going up or down the vertical speed indicator will read at zero and we'll have a constant airspeed indication of 100 knots.
what this is is a static pressure that's slightly lower than the pitot pressure. Again, both the static port and the pitot tube are experiencing the same amount of static air pressure, but with that 100 knots of airspeed, the pitot system is going to have an increased amount of air pressure, that 0.48 inches of ram pressure. And it's that difference between the pitot pressure and the static pressure that gives us our airspeed. So now what happens when these things fail in flight? What would happen if we covered up the static port or we covered up part of the pitot tube? Let's have a look at each one of these hypothetical failures. The first one is, what if we cover up that static port? How does this happen? Well, it could be an accumulation of ice. It could be uh, some dirt gets in the way of it. It could be that we forgot to remove a, a piece of painter's tape or something like that from the static port before we took off. But let's have in this hypothetical situation that everything was working fine at 3,000 feet and 100 knots, and then all of a sudden, there's a failure. There's a blockage of that static port. Now, Initially, there's not going to register any change on the instruments at all. What's happened now that we've blocked the static system is that that air inside the static pressure system will be trapped. It won't change. It won't drop to zero. Remember, zero is vacuum. That's not happening here. We're not sucking the air out the static port. We're just covering it up so that changes in air pressure aren't going to be introduced into the system. So initially, there's no change on the instruments. We still have that same 27.3 inches of pitot pressure and 26.82 inches of static pressure, but if we change the pressure outside or if we change the speed that we're flying through the air, it won't be able to be detected by the static pressure system. So now let's say the aircraft descends. So we descend and we get into higher pressure air. Now the pitot tube is not blocked. So we're going the same speed and we have that same roughly half an inch of ram air pressure, that 0.48 inches. But now that we've descended, the static pressure, the pressure that's sort of like ambient that's in the atmosphere will have increased. So notice that now it's jumped up to 27.84, where before it was 26.82. Well, guess what? Because the static port was blocked at 3,000 feet, as we descend, it's not going to register that increase in pressure. The static pressure system will still be stuck at 2682. So if it's stuck, the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator won't register any change in altitude. That's one failure, right? So as we've descended, let's say we've gone from 3,000 to 2,000 feet here, like in the image, the altimeter will still tell us that we're up at 3,000. In addition to that, though, the air speed indicator, remember, this works off of changes in air pressure. Well, we've just increased the pitot pressure by descending, but we've held the static pressure constant. So the difference between the pitot and the static pressure will have increased inaccurately, right? It's not that we are actually increasing the airspeed of the aircraft, but look at the airspeed indication. It's gone from 100 knots to 180 just by descending. We may still be at the same airspeed, meaning the ram pressure, the air pressure that's coming through the intake tube of the pitot port will have stayed the same, but the airspeed indication will inaccurately read higher as we've descended. Now the opposite happens when we climb. So now we're going back up to 3,000 feet from 2,000 feet. The vertical speed indicator in the altimeter is still frozen because of that blockage, but as we've climbed, that pitot pressure will start to reduce again, so the difference will get smaller between the pitot and the static, so the airspeed indication will start to go back down again. So let's unfail the static port and go back to our baseline scenario where we're at straight and level, unaccelerated flight at 3,000 feet and 100 knots, and again, everything's working. And now let's see what will happen when we start to have some failures or some blockages in that pitot tube. But first, let's imagine what happens if there's a blockage on the intake of the pitot tube. Now, this pitot tube is sitting out into the uh, moving air, and things that kind of protrude off the aircraft, like pitot tubes or temperature probes or things like that, they tend to freeze first. So this is actually a very common failure when you're flying in uh, icing conditions, is that the first thing that's going to ice up might be that tip of the pitot tube. Uh, so what will happen is you'll block that source of ram pressure. Remember that there's two openings usually on this pitot tube. There's that 
intake port that's getting ram air pressure but then there's also that outflow drain where it's not oriented in the relative wind so it's just having static air pressure ambient air pressure come in well this aircraft that was or is flying at 100 knots once that source of ram air pressure is gone because of that blockage on the front the only source of air in the pitot system is from ambient or static air pressure so there won't be any difference between the air pressure in the static system and the air pressure in the pitot system it's basically like we have two static systems that means that the difference between the pitot pressure and the static pressure will be zero just like in the example where we looked at the aircraft that was on the ground where the difference between the pitot and the static pressure was zero the airspeed indication is going to be zero so this is a really easy failure to see in flight because your airspeed indicator is going to go from indicating whatever airspeed you were at to dropping down to zero it's a pretty good uh it's a pretty good indication it's a pretty good hint that there's a blockage on the front of your pitot tube now how does this affect flight going forward i mean you know, initially the airspeed indicator drops down to zero but remember that the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator aren't connected to the pitot tube at all they're not relying on pitot pressure so if you descend the static port still being open means that the altimeter and vertical speed indicator will read that descent accurately so you see here the aircraft descending showing it going down to 2000 feet and showing it at a uh, negative 400 foot per minute vertical speed descent that all that all reads accurately but notice what's going on with the pitot system it's still blocked so yeah the static pressure will have increased along with the static pressure that's coming through the static port so the difference will still be zero so you won't have any change in that inaccurate zero indication on the airspeed indicator now let's unfail the instruments again and go back to the beginning 3,000 feet unaccelerated straight and level flight at 100 knots and everything's reading correctly so block in the front of it airspeed goes straight to zero what if we block the whole thing what if it's not just a little bit of ice but what if the entire thing gets covered up both the intake tube or the intake uh, source in the pito and that outflow drain on the back so blocking both of them up traps the air in the pito system that 27.3 inches of air pressure that we had before that's not going anywhere because now we've trapped the system it's a closed system so initially just like when we blocked the static system before there won't be any change on any of the instruments you still have the same amount of air pressure in both the pitot and the static so the instrument uh, the uh, indication on the instruments won't change now what's interesting is that when the aircraft climbs to 4,000 feet for example now again the static ports open so the instruments that only run off of the static system will read accurately your altimeter reads 4,000 feet and your vertical speed indicator reads a climb of about 400 feet per minute but as you go up higher in altitude and the static pressure drops if that pitot system is all blocked up and the air is trapped the pitot pressure stays the same but that static air pressure is falling in other words the difference between the pitot pressure and the static pressure is getting larger and larger so you see the static pressure dropped to 25.84 inches pitot pressure stayed the same where it was now that bigger difference translates to a bigger indication of airspeed so our 100 knots that we were experiencing before is now 140 knots by the way this is completely independent of how fast you may or may not actually be flying remember it's just the difference between that pitot pressure whenever the system was blocked and the static pressure that's currently being experienced by the static system so you can fly fast you can fly slow but if you change your altitude the airspeed indicator works like an altimeter basically as you go up it goes up and as you go down the airspeed indication also goes down because now as we've descended back to 3,000 feet again the altimeter and the VSI are working just fine but as you've increased the pressure in the static system that difference between the pitot pressure and the static pressure will get lower and lower and so the airspeed indication drops again so to summarize these because you see these on the FAA knowledge exam and you're probably going to get asked about these failures on the oral portion of your check ride just remember that we can summarize these three failures the following way if you block the static system the altimeter and the VSI are frozen 
you can go up, you can go down, you can stay at the same altitude. Whatever they were reading when that system was blocked, they're going to stay there. If the VSI was showing a climb or a descent when you block it, it's going to be at zero. So it's going to go to zero and it's going to stay at zero now because, again, the air pressure isn't changing, so those changes in air pressure aren't being registered as climbs and descents anymore. The airspeed indicator, though, will work opposite your changes in altitude. So if you go down, your airspeed indicator is going to read an increase in altitude and vice versa. Now let's block the front of the pitot port. Basically, you block that front, but the outflow drain remains open. The airspeed indicator drops straight to zero while the altimeter and the VSI are unaffected. Block the entire pitot system, trap the air inside the pitot system. Both the ram and the drain are blocked. Well, your altimeter and your VSI are fine, but now your airspeed indicator is basically working like an altimeter. As you climb, the airspeed indication climbs. As you descend, the airspeed indication goes down. So if these big drawbacks to the PITO static system are such a problem for our indication on our instruments, is there anything that we can do about it? Yeah, most aircraft have equipped ways of dealing with blockages in both the static system and the PITO system. So again, we said that icing is a big concern on that PITO tube. It's sticking out there into the air. It usually ices up first. So a lot of aircraft will have a little heating element inside the PITO tube that you can turn on on the switch there that'll heat up so that any ice will melt or you can sort of preempt the, the buildup of any ice on there. Additionally, if you have a blockage in the static system, you can introduce a source of alternate static air. That knob there that, that's on the right in the Cessna, if you pull that out, that'll introduce just the cabin air into the static system. So rather than pulling it off the static port that's in the uh, opening on the side of the aircraft in the Cessna, you can get a little bit of air from the cabin. Now there's always going to be a little bit of a difference in pressure between the air inside and outside the cabin. Usually that's caused by the slipstream of the propeller kind of impacting or almost creating like a little bit of its own ram pressure into that pitot tube. So the pressure in the cabin is always going to be a little bit lower. So pull that static pressure port or that alternate static uh, on when you're in flight. You usually notice like a slight little jump in altitude and a little jump in vertical speed indicator as well. But these are our countermeasures for those pitot static failures that you might see.